For these Chinese tourists, seeing the Great Barrier Reef with their own eyes is a dream come true. Some two million visitors flock to Australia's northeast coast every year to marvel at the underwater paradise. But behind the pretty pictures, there's a sad story. Over the past 30 years, the reef has lost half its coral. And now, the underwater marvel faces a new threat, just a few kilometers away. Several large projects are planned along the coast of Queensland state to boost Australia's coal exports. Is there still time to save the Great Barrier Reef? The Great Barrier Reef is a study in superlatives. It stretches 2,300 kilometers, making the coral reef the planet's largest living organism. A true natural wonder. It's also a paradise for divers. Tony Fontes, who's from the US, came to Australia as a backpacker 30 years ago. He only intended to stay a few weeks and earn a little money as a diving instructor. But he ended up staying. One day I'll see a green turtle, which is pretty amazing because they're endangered in their own right. But uh, we do see them regularly on the reef where they're protected. And then during whale season, to see a whale from above water is amazing. To see one underwater is a once in a lifetime event, which I've managed to do once and I'm waiting for that next time. So the beauty of the Great Barrier Reef is you never know what you're going to see, but you know you're going to see something absolutely amazing every time you get wet. UNESCO declared the Great Barrier Reef a World Heritage Site in 1981. It's hard to believe that these waters could one day be home to a sludge dump, which is what the Australian government is planning. Cherry Muddle works as a campaigner for the Australian Marine Conservation Society. She's showing us the Abbott Point project, just 40 kilometers from the coral reefs. The coal port on Queensland's east coast is at the center of a bitter debate between Australia's energy industry and environmental activists. Abbott Point will be the largest coal port in the world on the doorstep of the Great Barrier Reef. It's a World Heritage Area, seventh wonder of the world. And they're planning to dump five million tons of spoil mud in the reef's waters. The controversial plan calls for a massive expansion of Abbott Point's port in order to accommodate bigger coal freighters. That would involve building new terminals, dredging the channels, and dumping millions of tons of sludge into the sea. I don't think it's appropriate to be dumping anywhere in the Great Barrier Reef. It's a World Heritage Icon, not a dump site. The latest science shows that when you dump dredge, it doesn't just sit there, it spreads, and it can spread up to 80 kilometres. Then it can settle and smother corals and seagrass. Diving instructor Tony Fontes fears the plans could spell the end of the Great Barrier Reef. Over the past three decades, he's witnessed the gradual erosion of the coral, which form an extremely delicate ecosystem. Climate change, tropical storms, and fertilizers used in agriculture have already taken a heavy toll on the coral. But the booming coal industry and plans to expand harbors are adding to the perils. UNESCO is threatening to revoke the Great Barrier Reef's special designation. That would be the biggest embarrassment I can imagine for a government, to lose the listing World Heritage Area while you're on watch. Can't think of anything more embarrassing. But it would also be a real blow to the tourism industry because having something as a World Heritage Area is very special. It's a responsibility we have to the world to protect the World Heritage values of the Great Barrier Reef. The government has already approved the Abbott Point expansion plan. The Townsville-based agency in charge of the coral reef's protection had the final say. 
We had to wait several weeks before our request for an interview was granted. The meeting place, the Great Barrier Reef Aquarium, promising a pretty backdrop at least. Russell Reichert is Australia's top coral reef protection official. He insists that the port expansion plans are completely safe. He's also brushed aside concerns raised within his department. We think that by staying within the existing ports, the, the damage, uh, if there would, there would be no unacceptable changes to the system. It's a low, by the big scale, it's a low impact uh, operation to maintain those ports and it will be a very long distance from existing major coral reef systems. It's a very big system. But there are fears that even slight tinkering with the ecosystem could have drastic consequences. Many people's livelihoods depend on the Great Barrier Reef not suffering any further devastation. Tony Brown takes tourists on cruises to the coral paradise. Are we pulling the sails the in? The Abbott Point project is only 40 kilometers away from the route he takes. Tourism is a sustainable industry. We are here, we want this, this area to be pristine for future generations, for everyone to enjoy. I can't understand how you can be looking at a, a non-sustainable industry such as coal. There's so much issues about the, where coal's going and its price. To go out there and do these ports when there are better options than sea dumping. I mean, we're not asking it. It's a modest request. Do not sea dump in the marine park. Don't take the risk. Tony Brown is convinced the government will do whatever it takes to help the coal industry. So he's decided to take up the fight from a different angle. I don't know whether I'll say it, Robert. His aim is to persuade major banks not to help finance the multi-billion dollar harbour projects. His biggest success so far, winning over Deutsche Bank. So we thought, well, why don't we go speak to the financial institutions? These guys need money. They're, they don't have a bucket full of money. They need to borrow. So we spoke to Deutsche Bank, explained our situation. And literally, let's be honest, if they can put a condition on there that the best practice is, is, is the only way they're going to give a condition to financing Abbott Point's expansion, then um, that seems the, the only way. So far, the coal industry isn't worried. Australia is the world's biggest coal exporter, and plans call for doubling foreign deliveries in the coming years. The industry is hoping to dig new mines in Queensland's interior and expand at least five ports on the coast. Michael Roche is an energy industry lobbyist, and he predicts a golden future for coal. Well, it's uh, such an important part of the economy, and we know that uh, coal demand globally is going to keep growing, particularly in Asia, uh, not just China, but also India and uh, Southeast Asia. They're strong markets. Coal. 10,000 coal vessels. But environmentalists fear coal will be the final straw for the Great Barrier Reef. Greenpeace has launched online ads like this one to heighten awareness about the coal projects. Activists claim marine life, including dolphins, will suffer if the plan goes ahead. But lobbyists say the environmentalists' campaign is misguided. They know that the Great Barrier Reef has some challenges, but they know those challenges don't come from port development and dredging. Uh, that won't stop the social media campaigns by the activists. Uh, they are very keen uh, to shut down the coal industry. While the coal industry repeats its claim that port expansion and dredging pose no risks, some people say they have evidence to the contrary. Crews began expanding the port in Gladstone three years ago. People here say they've already been affected by the consequences. Mark McMillan is a third generation fisherman and is taking us out to see the new terminal. In order to make the harbour navigable for bigger freighters, millions of tons of silt were dredged from Gladstone and dumped out at sea. Things weren't too bad for us until the dredging started and, you know, it's, you could almost just flick a switch once, once the full-on dredging started. We were catching some mackerel in the harbour, further down the harbour. They just disappeared overnight from 200 kilos a night to zero. On land, one of the world's largest liquid gas export terminals is taking shape. Mark McMillan used to throw his nets where the gas freighters will soon be docking. 
you've only got to look at it and any person that can tie their own shoelaces can, can't tell me that this does not have any effect on the environment. It, it's, look at it. Most people involved in the fishing industry have given up and are seeking compensation from the courts. But Mark McMillan wants to continue fishing, even though much of his catch is unfit for sale. He shows us salmon he caught a few weeks ago and froze as evidence. The fish have red eyes and show signs of bleeding. McMillan suspects that pollution from the harbor floor made the fish sick. So far, the Port Authority denies any responsibility. I'm 100% sure it's got to do with the dredging. I'm positive. I, I, what else can it be? There is no other, no other excuse for it, because we've never seen it before. But port expansion is going ahead in spite of those concerns. Environmental activist Cherry Muddle fears more situations like the one in Gladstone if elected officials don't change their thinking. It's extremely frustrating. If you look at Gladstone, we still have many questions unanswered. It was an environmental disaster, yet the, the Australian government is fast-tracking massive industrialization on the reef, and they're approving millions of tons of dredging and dumping in the reef. Globetrotters hoping to experience the Great Barrier Reef in all its beauty would be well advised to hurry up. Activists fear the coral won't survive the fight against the coal industry.